If you are a stock investor, there is a variety of information to digest. One that is high on the list would be the results of FOMC, or Federal Open Market Committee, meetings. Determining the direction of U.S. monetary policy, these meetings have a far-reaching impact on Wall Street and the global financial market. At the FOMC meeting on March 16th, the Fed increased its benchmark interest rate by 0.25% for the first time since December 2018. The Fed hinted at plans to raise the rate at every FOMC meeting this year, which would amount to six more hikes. If that becomes the case, the interest rate could reach as high as 1.9% by the end of the year from its current near-zero level. The Bank of Korea is also expected to follow suit. If the difference between interest rates in Korea and the U.S. widens, more foreign capital may exit the Korean market, putting downward pressure on the value of the Korean currency. The real concern is increasing financial burden on households and small business owners who have had to take out more loans, especially during the pandemic. The era of low interest rates seems to be drawing to an end. Whether you are a stock investor or not, it would be smart to pay close attention to the news ahead on interest rates in the U.S. Yes, we can also say, at FOMC's meeting in March, the Fed elevated its benchmark interest rating by 0.25 percentage points, another way of saying percent. Note that we cannot, however, say percentage alone, so percentage points, or percent, and hinted at the possibility of, you can hint something, or you can hint at something, same meaning, raising the rate six more times by the end of the year. We can also say, at the FOMC meeting in March, the Fed boosted its benchmark interest rate by 0.25% and hinted it might raise the rate another six times by the year's end. The year's end, the end of the year. Right, and another way to say this is, in the event the U.S. raises its interest rate, Korea should do the same. Otherwise, foreign capital will flee, or run away from, the Korean market, making the Korean one weaker. We can also say, should the U.S. raise its interest rate, so if it does, Korea needs to do so as well. Say it doesn't, so a hypothetical, let's imagine it doesn't. Then, foreign capital will flood out of the Korean market, weakening the Korean won. That's right. Similarly, we can say, higher interest rates will place a heavier financial burden on small business owners and households who have had to take out more loans recently to survive amid the pandemic and out-of-control housing costs. The costs keep going up at a rate that's beyond our control. They're out of control. We can also say, higher interest rates will add to the financial burden on small business owners and households who have had to take out more loans recently to manage in the face of COVID restrictions, so limitations on business hours and so on, and soaring housing costs. Mm, so here we have the point of it all. The days of low interest rates seem to be long gone. When something's long gone, it's lost forever. The government, businesses, and households need to accept that interest rates hikes are unavoidable and prepare to respond, so they need to be ready and they need to act. We can also say, the times when interest rates were low seem to be behind us. Those times are behind us. It means we are past that now. Those times are over. The government, businesses, and households have to concede or admit that interest rate hikes are on their way, they're coming, and we have to be ready to respond. <laughs>